Hi guys, this is Tech City. My name is Belarus Okoji and you're welcome to Tech City Insights. On Tech City Insights today, we are having a conversation with one of Nigeria's, well, um, most inspiring young tech executives and he'll be sharing with us some insights um, in the company that he is heading a global company but of course with its feet very very solidly planted in nigeria and of course that means quite a number of things because nigeria market is different from every other part of the world now he will share those insights with us and tell us a few other very interesting things that he has been up to as country manager please make welcome Tokwe akimumi country manager for uber nigeria thank you very much so good to have you on the show thank you same here so talk to me about what uber is to you both from a country country manager perspective and from a customer perspective because you must have used the application prior to becoming country manager yes uh, thank you very much bella uh you started using uber 2015. uh i used to tell a lot of people then that i would never get a car right really? uh yes <laughs> <laughs> so I, I was a frequent user on uber like every day so the flexibility it gave to me uh and then uh, the fact that like i wasn't stranded at any point in time uh, was one of the reasons why i was using uber then I'm joining Uber now. Um, I guess our responsibility, my responsibility as uh, as a country manager, has shifted from just being a rider, um, and then it's a fantastic place to work. Um, our vision is to get people from one point to the other at the cheapest available rate possible, right? Uh, while doing that, we also have to uh, get improved or better earnings opportunities for for drivers. Uh, we're obsessed about this, and we're constantly disrupting ourselves internally and looking for more creative ways to get people from one point to the other. Um, so over the last one year, we've launched a number of products. Okay. Um, Connect, uh, a delivery product. Uh, as you can attest, delivery in, in, in Lagos can be can be worrisome. Right? Yes. You stand at your door and then someone will call you and say, hey, where, where are you and where are you? Where, how can I get to you, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so, and then, of course, it's very expensive, right? You, you go on Instagram today and then someone from one point to the other will tell you uh, something no more than five kilometers, tell you 4,000 naira, 3,000 naira. So what we're doing is helping to solve the problem in that space, mm -hmm. uh, the problem about visibility, uh, about navigation, uh, and also about the affordability of it, right? Uh, so we launched uh, uh, Connect uh, sometime last year. Mm -hmm. We've also launched uh, other products. Okay. We've launched uh, Uber Moto in Ibadan. Yes. Um, uh, and that brings me to the, the story of city expansion. Uh, last year, we expanded to two new cities, Portacot and Ibadan, uh, to give more opportunities to drivers there, our drivers, our driver partners in Nigeria, and also uh, more uh, affordable uh, moving opportunities for riders in those cities. Mm -hmm. uh, talking about Uber Moto is a low cost product. Uh, so you have your regular X in Ibadan where people use the regular sedans, mm -hmm. but then the Uber Moto is the bike. Bike, product. Okada. Uh, yeah, Okada, <laughs> exactly. So cheap and also very safe for, for users of Ibadan to transport themselves. So you have talked about Uber Connect, you've talked yeah. about Uber Moto. Yes. Um, what other products have been launched over the past year since you became country manager? So one, one useful product is Uber Hourly. Um, one particularly good uh, use case for Uber Hourly is for business users, right? right. So you're going for a meeting and you don't, uh, you don't want to book a ride after the business meeting. You can book uh, a ride for two hours, three hours, four hours, uh, and then have the driver wait for you. So there's more earnings opportunities for the driver because now you do not have to burn for to go pick someone else and then you don't have to wait for another request and also more convenience for you as a rider. Mm -hmm. I use this uh, Uber Hourly a lot in December, going from shows, uh, from one show to another show. Uh, so I just book a ride for four hours, right. have the, dri the, uh, the driver waits for me and then meet him after. I do not want to book a ride when everybody is rushing, right? I, I know you see that, I'll be using mm -hmm. that. Um, another product is Ubergo, mm -hmm. uh, but Ubergo is right now restricted in VI. Uh, Ubergo is a low-cost product also uh, in Lagos, where riders pay about 35% less than they currently do to move from one point to the other. Right. Uh, given the economic situation in the country, you know that like, better and cheaper ways to move around mm -hmm. is always uh, uh, a good option for the city. Absolutely. Yeah. Now, with Uber launching the Okada option in Ibadan, particularly, I want to touch on that for a few. Okay. What has the response been and um, why Ibadan as your choice city? 
Yeah, our response has been great, fantastic too. Uh, we've grown significantly since launching our first week of December. Uh, so I think that gives us 12 weeks of operations now and it's a steady climb since we launched. Uh, why Badon? Um, uh, we looked at how progressive the government is there, mm. um, some of the uh, statements from government and also the policies that they have there, uh, and then one of the reasons why we launched there, right? And something we say is we work with governments to ensure that we have the right regulations to ensure that we're compliant in the cities that we operate with. Mm -hmm. and that's like a really good deciding factor in launching Ubermoto in Ibadan. Incredible. Cool. Now, what challenges will you say Uber has faced perhaps within the time that you have been country manager? And what is perhaps your model to rising above these challenges? Okay, um, so I would say the biggest problem would be regulation, right? Um, uh, and I'm saying that because there's a good side to it, there's also yeah. a, uh, a challenging side to it. Mm. Uh, so most of the laws we have in Nigeria do not properly govern e healing right? Uh, the, uh, the, the laws are they've been made since you know you know what year right before and, tech exactly before tech. and we were just launched in nigeria in 2005 uh sorry 2015 uh, apologies um so what that means is th those laws do not um do not adequately cover for our mode of operations mm -hmm. right so we're constantly working with the government in cities that we currently are operational to ensure that we have uh functioning regulations for uh, for our mode of operations uh, one particularly good win that we had recently was in Lagos State. Mm. Uh, I'm sure you've heard of Lagos Regs. It was everywhere at some point. Um, and it's the first in West Africa, right? So we're taking that model and we're taking it to other cities. Uh, so conversations in the four other cities where we are operational and also taking that to other West African cities. So I would say the biggest challenge would be regulation, but we are constantly working with government uh, to ensure that we rise above that. If there was anything that perhaps the government could do primarily, um, because maybe particularly in Lagos, um, yeah. the government is both the regulator and in some instances even competition. Um, what would what would you want the government to do to make the business feel more secure in Nigeria? Um, so, like I said, always working with the government to ensure that uh, there's working regulations for uh, our, our business, our business model. And also some sort of collaboration will be uh, will also be encouraged, right? We're open to working with the government uh, to put out uh, different policies, right, uh, that would favor the ecosystem and also different modes of transportation, right? In other cities, we have uh, boats, uh, we have boats, we have buses, we mm -hmm. have trains, uh, and other low cost uh, means of traveling. So we're always ready to work with the government to ensure that that. Uh, that that happens, and of course we did Uber boats at some point, uh, a pilot pro uh, program for two weeks. Mm -hmm. uh, we worked collaboratively with the government at that instance, so like we can replicate that and moving forward have more of that in Lagos. I'm an Uber user, okay. and I also sometimes use the competition. Okay. If there's one thing that I have uh, sort of come to hear a lot of times from okay. riders. It is, you know, um, Uber has a reputation for being safer. Uber has a reputation for being more professional in their approach, okay. etc. Do you see these as some of the things that mark Uber from the competition? And perhaps, um, what other things do you think marks Uber from the competition? Um, so something that we that's big uh, top priority for us is uh, safety, safety for both the drivers and riders. And I also entered earlier the affordability story for riders and also improved earnings for, for drivers. Uh, when I talk about safety, uh, I'm talking about safety holistically. If you can't have a marketplace without trust between uh, the participants uh, in the marketplace. Yeah. So it means that you as a rider, you would have to trust that the driver is who he says he is mm -hmm. and uh, you, feel, you feel safe around him. And that is what the Uber platform enables, right? Uh, for, so uh, on the driver side, we do extensive security checks. Um, aside from the regulatory documents, we also give training to you, and we do some sort of background check uh, to ensure that like uh, all the drivers uh, would wouldn't uh, cause any harm on the on the platform, right? And if there's any case that's re reported, we take action almost uh, right away. 
Um, also, uh, and of course, you know that right now, dri some drivers have been complaining about safety uh, across from even drivers, from riders. Exactly. Yeah. To ensure that drivers are, are safer on the platform, we also have something called Rider Selfie mm. uh, that would prompt uh, riders to take a selfie of like what they look like uh, before they take a trip, right? So either that or you put your credit card on the platform. What we've seen is that bad actors typically do not want to show their faces uh -huh. um, or do not want to add like credit cards or their debit card, regular one, uh, on the platform. Mm. On the rider side, uh, before I leave the rider side, still on the driver side, we also have um, ride check uh, both, on both sides of, of, of the platform, uh, where if you're going on a trip and you have like a detour and you're not moving for a significant long period of time, you get yeah. an alert. Yeah, like, what is your going vehicle on? has been stationary, Station I think. Yeah. For a while, <laughs> what is going on, yeah. right? And we have to get a response from both the driver and rider to ensure that like everything is okay. Mm -hmm. If we don't, then uh, we start monitoring that trip. Um, on the rider side, uh, just to uh, ensure that drivers are safe, like I said earlier, we do extensive checks for uh, on the driver side in terms of documentation, mm -hmm. in terms of background check, and also um, some sort of uh, personality test uh, yes. to, uh, to take out all the bad actors, right? We also do regular trainings for, for these drivers. Um, something to ensure that both drivers and riders are safe and also feel, feel more secure on the platform is the availability of our 24-7 contact center. So you can call in to ensure and then make any report at any time and that will be swiftly answered uh, uh, almost immediately. Um, something else we have is the insurance. Um, so if you're going on the Uber trip today and something happens to you, we have a partnership with um, AXA Mansard uh, to ensure that you're fully covered. So all of those things put together is one of the reasons why uh, we do not have most of the safety incidences we have here because we uh, potentially get the bad actors before they do act. And that's why riders and drivers feel safer on the Uber platform. Now, honing in a bit on your designation and you know your post as country manager yes. there are certain issues that are i guess peculiar to the nigerian markets yeah. um and i'd like for us to touch on that for a bit because these are things that i have experienced myself okay and sometimes when i get into an uber for instance i'm having conversations with the drivers and i'm, I'm noting some of these things now from okay. a rider perspective okay. there are sometimes issues of or oh, the ride the, the the vehicle that i entered or that i saw okay. is not the same as it is on the app okay and when you ask the drivers they say oh i updated it they've not changed it on the in their system okay um, so I'd like for you to sort of help us with, um, you know, an actual official response to some of these claims <laughs> yeah. by some of these drivers. It's like, oh, they've not changed the vehicle. It's my second car. They've not changed it on the app. You know, we also hear things like if it's a card trip, for instance, yeah, I'm not going on card. Should we go offline? Mm -hmm. um, and sometimes people are like, why? Why is that? These drivers should know that these products right are meant to be used by by riders um and you know sometimes the um the drivers sometimes would offer to um i mean so i've had an, an instance where the driver was like um i don't I, I don't want to go to that to that area but they would refuse to cancel the trip mm. and so you as a rider are almost confused okay what do we do okay. and back when uber would uh, issue can issue a a charge a, a charge for cancelling, but that doesn't happen anymore. No. Is that is this the reason why to help the rider always come back and not feel like oh my goodness? Okay, um, so I, I think there are three questions in one, yes. uh, and I will start from the very first one um, around the vehicles. vehicle plate number exactly. and all of that. So I think I saw a report recently where uh, we're talking about different vehicles and, or, and also a different driver, yeah. right? Uh, in terms of like different driver, it's almost like not possible on the Uber app, right? Uh, and I'm using the word almost carefully. Uh, the reason for that is we do periodic verification uh, or facial verifications for drivers, right? So you turn on your Uber app, as many as one, two, three times in a day uh, before you take a trip, you're asked mm -hmm. to take a picture and we verify that against uh, a picture on your profile and mm -hmm. on your driver's license. Mm -hmm. um, if if it's, uh, there's any discrepancy, we'll take you offline, right? And then you'd have to 
um, just visit our office so that we know you're the one, mm -hmm. right? In terms of vehicles, obviously, it will be hard to, to, to tell that uh, apart now. So we rely on reports from riders, right? right? So if you take a, like, before, what I tell people is before you even go into the vehicle, confirm the plate, plate number. number. If the plate number is not what you see on the Uber app, just report your trip. Once you do that, we take the driver offline and then you would, if you've updated your vehicle, you'd have to go do uh, another ve vehicle inspection report. Uh, so we'll verify the vehicle and then add that to your profile, mm -hmm. right? Uh, so that is how we solve those two problems. Uh, in terms of um, uh, destination and also card cash, it's an education thing and it's mm -hmm. something we're constantly educating drivers about. Um, about the uh, what what the experience is for riders like you uh, that want to go to certain locations. Of course, you have to consider that um, there are certain areas where that might not be safe at, uh, at a given time, time, time day, yeah. right? Uh, so you also have to match that with driver safety, right? But if there's any instance where either the driver or the rider wouldn't want to go to a particular place, please cancel and make another request, right? Um, so we encourage drivers to accept all trips on the Uber platform, but instances where they do not feel safe, mm -hmm. they can cancel that trip um, and then the rider can cancel. It doesn't matter who cancels now. Like, <laughs> yes, actually, you, you get, thankfully. Yes, as long as you get another trip to take you uh, to where you're going. So do you think that the reputation that Uber has as a very safe and secure platform, do you think it is enough to convert to more users um, compared to the competition? Yes, I think it's a, a, it's a, a good uh, competitive advantage uh, that we have right now, considering the level of safety in Nigeria generally. Mm -hmm. um, so yes, uh, it's something we'll keep pushing and it's something we wouldn't waver on. Like, we, like I said earlier, there are four things that are very important to us. Safety for drivers and riders, mm -hmm. affordability, um, and then more earnings opportunities for, for, for drivers, three actually. So those three things are things that we wouldn't waver on. on so you are in Lagos, you're in Abuja, yes. you're in Port Harcourt, yes. and you're in Ibadan. Yes, and Benin. And Benin. What yeah. is the plan to expand into more Nigerian cities? So um, I'll tell you that in Uber Nigeria, our plan is to be everywhere, right? So everywhere would mean all cities in Nigeria, mm -hmm. right? Uh, so in no distant future, we'll be expanding um, because we, we think that everybody everywhere should be able to get from one point or point A to point B at the cheapest av available rate. And drivers in those cities should also be able to make alternative income. So in no distant future, we'll be expanding to uh, more cities in Nigeria. So you have been Uber Nigeria manager for about a year and a month or so. Okay. What has been the most exciting um, I guess event of your of your time and maybe the most challenging. Um, so event, I would <laughs> say every day. Um, uh, coming to work every day is, is important, and we do uh, important work here, mm. right? I've been in Uber for, for a year, but it feels like I've been here for five years with the amount of things that we've done, mm -hmm. right? Um, it's a constantly changing environment, and we are looking to disrupt ourselves internally uh, to ensure that we are constantly give value to riders and drivers. Um, but if I had to pick one out, I would say uh, city expansion, expanding to Port Harcourt and Ibadan, really important that, that we were in those cities and also the launch of Ubago uh, in Nigeria uh, or, or in Lagos. Right now you see Suzuki, uh, small hatchbacks on the road like in VR, and you also see regular white um, Suzuki, sorry, innocent vehicles in VI, right? So it's it's a, it's one important project for us, and we're happy that we've at least launched that. Challenging, um, I would say, uh, you wouldn't be able to have wins without challenges, right? So we, we view challenges as like uh, a pathway to having important wins, right? Um, so I wouldn't be able to pick anyone else <laughs> on that part. Okay, final, final question. Yeah. There are a number of people who are curious about how to partner with Uber, yeah. right? So whether they are um, small businesses or big businesses or, you know, whatever. What is the, what is the process and, and how open is Uber to some of these kinds of partnerships and collaborations? So we're very open to, to partnerships. Um, so like across our different products. Uh, right now, uh, for Uber Connect, delivery products, we're actually partnering with small businesses that have uh, the required documents and would need 
a platform like ours to, to generate demand, right? So we're going on like about like talking to these businesses to onboard on the Uber platform. Across other products, UberX, UberGo, we're also open to collaboration. Uh, all you have to do uh, firstly is download the Uber app and register, and then you can follow the process. Okay. And we'd also put a call through to you if you have um, any challenges up, uh, along the way. Um, but then also in terms of business uh, partnerships, uh, events and, uh, and the likes, we're also ready uh, to do that. You just have to contact our U4B team. Uh, I'll probably give you a link if you want me to after this. We love that. How, <laughs> how to do that. Mm -hmm. cool. Thank you so much, Tope. Before you, you go, much. what do you want to be remembered for as country manager at Uber? <laughs> so, um, I think uh, what I want to be remembered for is um, the affordability story of Uber in Nigeria. Nigeria is a tough uh, country. Terrain, yeah. Um, I think I was reading a report uh, a few days ago that said the average Nigerian will spend about 50% of their income on feeding. Right? That's significant. So it means less money for transportation, less money for uh, for other things, for rent. Mm. Right? Um, so we want to make transport as cheap as possible for people, and that is what like uh, that is one story that we're trying to build across all the cities that we're operational in Nigeria. Thank yes. you so much, Tobaki. Thank you. Very Thank much. you. This has been fun. We wish you all the best as country manager. Thank you. And we hope that um, your contribution to history is etched very, very deeply in the hearts of as many who are Uber users in Nigeria. Thank you very much. That's all we have time for today on Tech City Insights. Really exciting time out with Tokwe Akimomi, Country Manager for Uber Nigeria. I'm Belarus from Tech City. Say thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.